Hello everyone, welcome to the Nurseries of Bengaluru series. In this episode, we will be talking about the nomadic nurseries that dot this dynamic city's urban landscape. Such nurseries are a befitting tribute to a city that was aptly named the Garden City of India. Though now it is almost synonymous with information technology, startups, pubs, etc., it has, however, managed to retain its rustic character with green settlements like these that have probably kindled many a green thumbs. I remember that before the pandemic, you would see a one-off curbside nursery like this, but with the onset of lockdowns and the demand for indoor plants skyrocketing, I saw many such nurseries, big and small, mushroom throughout the city. So the basic feature of such nurseries is that they are not permanent because they either start their venture on a rented plot of land that would on an average cost them 5,000 to 6,000 rupees per month. Or some even start their venture on government land until they are asked to wick it. Such gorilla nurseries actually help in keeping such surroundings clean and green and prevents miscreants from turning such areas into an eyesore. They get their water from water tankers that charge approximately rupees 500 per tank. They do live in dire conditions, mostly under such tarpaulin sheds with their meager belongings and of course plans that they have pinned their hopes on. They are aware of the latest plant trends and keep updating their collections and I saw this especially during the pandemic when the houseplant collection in such nurseries became a staple and they also started learning the names of some plants to keep themselves ahead in the competition. Before that and in the early 2000s, it was mostly roses and such typical flowering plants that sold like hotcake. They also have a robust supply chain with pushcarts that bring the plants to our doorsteps. And trust me, some of the most exotic plants I have in the garden are from these pushcart vendors who often knock my door saying the plants outside my house for their boni or their day's first payment. Some are connected to the nurseries and some are just freelancers. You can see here that they have a variety of plants from big indoor plants to succulents for all kinds of gardeners. Unlike the bigger established nurseries, here you have the scope to bargain but when you do bargain, do it keeping in mind their living conditions and be reasonable. I tried speaking to many of them on giving an interview but most of them were either shy or were scared for some reason so I left that pursuit. So folks, before the Instagram and social media influx, remember that these nomadic nurseries were our only green lifelines who have over the years enriched our lives with plans, plans and more plans. So let's keep this tradition of buying from such curbside nurseries going and bring a smile to their faces.